In this video, I'll be doing a walkthrough of the Windows 10 Photo Editor. I find the Windows 10 Photo Editor to be a very good editing application, and it has many more features than you would normally get from a simple photo editor. So if I go down to the window on the left corner and open up Photos, display of the photographs and the different collections that I have, and it has gone out and found my photographs on the hard drive. I had to specify the folders which the photographs would be found in, and uh, this one is a demo which I'll be using. One of the things I'll show you is the settings. Um, under settings we can actually go into different sources and change the sources. So in this particular case I have E uh, photos as well as E demo temp 1. I can also add a folder. If I select add a folder of course it gives me the Windows Explorer or File Explorer and I can select another directory and it will pick up the photographs automatically from that directory. I'm going to go back to folders and what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this folder. Now I sort of prearranged these ones in this temporary folder for the demonstration. One of the things I want to check out right away is red eye. Now I'm just going to select this photograph here and I'm going to go up and go to the photo editor. And down here we have red eye. I just want to check to see what kind of job it does. So I do a click here, and I do a click there, and actually it does a pretty darn good job. That's good. So, all right, leave that and go back again to our other photographs. The picture I want to work on right now is this one here. It's a picture I had taken in the fall. There's several things I want to modify. The framing, it's a little off, as well as I guess some pillars here, uh, I guess the roadside pillars, and I want to remove those. And I want to enrich the colors as well, overall. Uh, that includes the blue of the sky, perhaps the ground. So I'll invoke the editor. So once the editor is invoked, on the left hand side we have the primary tools. And for each primary tool, correspondingly on the right hand side, we have a subset. So I'm going to start with the basic fixes. And I do want to crop, so but before I crop, maybe I'll just check and make sure that this thing is straight. And let's see if we can move it around a little bit and see if we can get a little bit straighter. And that's just about it. I can go quite a ways, but don't really want to do that. So there we go, right there. That's just about what I want. Go. I'll do some cropping as well. Now under cropping, if I select this icon up here, I can do a custom crop, which I'm going to do right now. Uh, go back to original. I can do a square crop or even a widescreen crop. You also have four by three, four by six, five by seven, and eight by ten. These are really good. If you plan to take your photograph and have them processed by a processor, uh, these will give you the ratios that you need. So that's really a great idea. Or for that matter, if you're going to run it through your printer and you want the size to be precise for the different paper size you have, okay, good idea here. So I'll just do a check mark there and get rid of that. And I'll go back to uh, sizing my photograph. So I'm going to pull this down a little bit, and then I'm going to move the photo around inside of the frame. And that's just about what I'm looking for. So I'll do a check mark on that. Now I'm just going to check here to see if there's anything else I want to do. I want to do a retouch to get rid of my pillars here. So I'll select retouch. And this item I really enjoy a lot. Because I can take that out of there and it sort of smartly puts something else in, which is kind of neat because I don't have to worry about it uh, messing up the picture with smudges or anything along those lines, you know. And so I'll select retouch again. It's turned off. So those are the basic fixes. I try auto enhance, but auto enhance isn't exactly what I want. So go back to filters. And on the right hand side, it's demonstrating using different filters that are available, the sort of auto filters that are available. 
And if I click down through them, there's none that will do exactly what I'm looking for, although that's one is nice. Now I'll select undo because there's not anything here that I'm looking for. So the next tool I'll go over and select will be light. Now I'm going to be coming back to light off and on several times. I'm going to check the brightness. And actually I could use a cut back a little bit on the light there. Contrast. Always. Always need contrast. Now I am doing a lot of fidgeting with this photograph, but it's uh, primarily to demonstrate the functionality of this application. And I like that contrast now, but I may come back. Highlights. This is going to lighten up the light areas or darken the light areas. And actually, I would just want it slightly dark. And shadows. Lightens the shadows or darkens the shadows. And I'm not sure what I'm going to be doing with that one quite yet. I am going next to colors. Select colors. And under colors, uh, we have temperature, tint, saturation, and color boost. As far as the temperature is concerned, it may look a little cool, so I might try to warm it up just a bit. It gives me a warmer feel to the photograph. Tint, uh, no, too green and too orange, so I'm going to leave that as is for now. Saturation. Now, I do like a lot of saturation, especially on the colored leaves. And I'm not getting exactly what I want there. So what I'm going to do is use Color Boost. Now, I can drag Color Boost over to the photograph and actually put it over top of the color that I want to boost. In this particular case, I want the fall colors from this tree. Those are the colors actually I'm looking for. I'm going to do a boost one way, and lo and behold, uh, the tree brightens up quite a bit. Now I can overdo it. Uh, but I'll just go to over here. That looks great. Now I will go back to light and consider my contrast again. That's good. And my highlights. I've, that's good because the blue of the sky is coming out. I'll go back to color, and I'll select saturation. And I'm just taking a little of that saturation off. I do notice too that the blue is a little weaker than I like, so I'm going to put the color boost icon on top of the sky. Let me see if I can get that color to come out a little bit more. Yeah, there we go. I got the blue. Next, I'll go down to effects and uh, under vignette, what this will do is darken the corners of the photograph. And it brings them down quite a bit actually. That's good. Now as well, I think I will do a select of focus. And select a focus gives me this circle to work with and I can stretch the circle out any way I want. And everything inside the circle will be in focus. Everything outside the circle will be out of focus. And it does a gradual out of focus, so it should look all right. I'll select the check mark for OK. Here I've got a pretty nice colorful photograph that I can print, maybe put on the wall. Now that I've got what I want, I can go up here and uh, there's several things I can select. And of course, save a copy is one. And I do a save. And it is saved now to the directory. As well, I can select print. And it gives me my printer settings. And if my printer was on, which is Canon in this particular case, uh, the number of copies, the orientation, source, size. And under size, of course, we can go down to these sizes that we were looking at before. 4x6, 4x8, 5x7, so on and so forth. Other sizes as well.
So there's many print options that we can use. So I'm going to do a cancel on that. So I have the photograph I want. I'm sort of ready to go. So I'm just going to close this off for now. Close the application. And I hope you enjoyed this walkthrough with Microsoft Photo. It is a pretty powerful program. It does have a lot of features that you wouldn't expect on a free application. I do use it. It's a great application to use. If you found this video interesting and of value, please comment and subscribe. And thank you for watching.